Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com. Now, we've no doubt had it where we've been in a forum or a Facebook group or maybe even Craigslist or eBay or something where someone has been using their mobile phone to talk about a Maxell cassette and the old autocorrect has kicked in and it's changed it to Maxwell. And, you know, we've always been there going, oh, check your autocorrect, Maxwell, they make good coffee. <laughs> you know, who's ever heard of a cassette made by Maxwell? Ah, here we have a Maxwell cassette, a Maxwell LN90. What's this all about? Well, as far as I can tell, and as far as we're all concerned, this is a knockoff. But this is a very well done knockoff. I've seen some knockoffs, and I'm going to put a picture of one right now here. Can you see that? The wrapper looks like a 1985 Maxell UDI, but if you look at the cassette itself, you can see that it just seems to be a clear cassette that's got nothing to do with it. But this Maxwell, if we look at it, actually looks like a Maxell LN90. The sticker looks right, the case looks right. In fact, let's compare it to the Maxell LN90 that's trying to mimic. Well, it's not trying to mimic this cassette, but it's mimicking this wrapper. If you look at the design of the wrappers, you can see they're very, very similar. The pattern, the designing, the writing, the positioning, even the back. The back, the actual text on this is identical. The graph's identical. The only difference is that on the Maxell it's blue, on the Maxwell it's red, on the Maxwell it says made in Korea, and on the Maxwell it says made in Singapore. And they've changed obviously the name Maxell to Maxwell. But literally, if we look, high performance for music recording, the use of Maxell's new crystal gamma ferric oxide magnetic particles improves mold by 1 dB. The use of Maxwell's new crystal gamma ferric oxide magnetic particles improves mold by... They've, they've, they've done a complete and utter copy job on this. So, is it just a Type 0 with a copied label and wrapping? Or is it something else? Well, like I say, if we look, this tape is different to this one. This is actually mimicking an earlier Maxell LN. It's actually mimicking this one. Oops, this is what it's trying to mimic. So let's open this up. I mean, they, they haven't even put a tear strip on this. What they like, no tear strips. They, they don't care about someone 35 years later trying to peel this open in front of the camera. Right, so that's quite loose, that. We might be able to actually uh, open this. Yes, the classic way to preserve the wrapper, just push it in and slide it out in one piece. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so now that they're both unwrapped, let's just let's just have a look at them. It's yeah, even the inner J card mimics it, even though the red normally signifies a 60 on a Maxell, and in this case a blue is 90, so they've copied the 60. But let's let's have a look, right? Cassettes. Can we see this one has got a diamond pattern? On the original Maxell with an A and a screwed shell. This one has a diamond pattern with an A and a screwed shell. These shells look very, very similar. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, the only big difference I can see is that this one, if you can see there, it says Singapore. This one says Japan. But other than that, they've done a very very good copy job on this. Now, this is a traditional Maxell from the say. So as we can see here, we've got the traditional leader with the arrows. And it also, I don't know if you can see, it says A there. So we've got the arrows and the A. This one just has a plain blue leader. So let's just wind this on a bit and let's have a look at this tape because Let's have a see. I'm expecting type zero. I mean, they've gone to a lot of trouble. The shell, if I didn't know any different, I'd say was actually identical. 
I mean, if we even look here, the spring pad has got a metal plate beneath it. I mean, this one, you can just hear it sounds more solid as it goes through. But like I say, let's have a look at the tape itself. If we compare the tapes, yeah, they're quite different. We've got the Maxwell is a light brown and the Maxell is a much darker brown. I mean, that's a lovely dark brown, but if we look at the calendaring on the Maxwell, it's not quite as shiny in the light as the original Maxell is. But other than that, this is a very, very cheeky knockoff. And uh, I think it's quite charming in this day and age now because no one's getting hurt. I mean, back in the day, if I was Max Sell, I'd be like, well, no, 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 no. You don't do this. But after all these years later where these are just bought as novelties now, I think it's quite endearing. I mean, let's have a look at the J cards. The J cards feel of the same material. They really do feel like the same material. Yeah, I've got some classical music on this one, but uh, the same layout, same fonts. And if I didn't know better, I'd say that the Maxwell were almost being coming out of the same factory as a Maxell and just being rebranded and put cheaper tape in. I mean, they feel sort of substantial they, they don't feel any lighter than the Maxell the only other big giveaway is of course the Maxell retaining hubs are very distinctive whereas these ones are just standard cheapy ones but uh, yeah so I'll tell you what we're going to do now I'm going to uh, fire up the Iowa with the meters and let's just for fun compare and contrast the Maxwell and the Maxell Okay, so I'm going to use my Iowa ADS 950 again today because I like looking at the visual representation of the biasing and level. And if you've not watched it, here's a link right here to a little video I did, which it sort of explains all this. So uh, we're going to use a real deal first. Let's record over Brahms Piano Quartet Number 3 on this Maxwell LN. So let's bias this up and see how this compares. Again, this is all at centre. This deck is calibrated internally to the TDKS8. So let's have a look. Um, yeah, about to be expected for a 1970s, early 80s phase. So let's give it some negative bias first to make the bias and the levels match up. They do, and then just a little bit of level. And we basically got it there. So not a hell of a lot of tweaking needed. So let's now listen to the hiss and play a bit of music. So peaking at about plus four. Let's just compare it to the source. Back to the tape. the sauce back to the tape okay so that was a used 70s Entry level ferric on a, on a, on a mid range at best deck. Didn't that sound really decent? Well, now to plumb the depths a bit, let's take the old Maxwell with the 
decidedly uncalendared Type 0 looking tape. Well, let's give it a fair crack of the whip. I mean, they went to all the trouble to put it in a decent enough shell, but is it just Type 0 rubbish tape in there? So let's calibrate this up now and compare it to the Max L. Ooh. Now, I was expecting the bias to be all the way down there. Uh, a little bit of level. And it's pretty there. It's it's I, that's surprising because I've I've never used this tape before. It's actually not too bad. In fact, I can dial the bias up a bit. It's it, it that's not. I'm quite surprised with that. That's very decent to be honest with you. I'm not sure what the sonic quality is going to be like. Let's just double check that. Yeah. Okay. There's a hiss. Let's play the same bit of quiet music on it and see how this one handles it. Again, peaking at plus four, let's flip it to the source. And back to the tape. The right, hang on, hang on. I'm not having this. I'm not having this. That sounded really good. So I'm flipped on this. This this actually sounds a lot better than I thought it was going to do. So let's put Dolby S on. Let's recalibrate it again with Dolby S. Bear with me. A bit more level. Okay, let's let's have a listen to this again. Let's play the rest of this song now, but with Dolby S on it. Just turn it down a little bit so it doesn't peak at four. Let's have a do. Tape, next to no hiss, play the tune. Back to the source. Back to the tape. I ain't making that up. This is genuinely the tape which was in there. This this isn't spooked. I, I'm not faking this. This is, if you can see here from the phone jack, the phones. This is the output going straight into my PC where it's been recorded in Audacity as a WAV file. I, I'm not faking this audio. Hey. <laughs> so what do you make of that? Obviously made to be a knockoff. Obviously made to Cash on people's ignorance, they see Max L, Maxwell, oh, it's the same thing, you know, the kind of thing you send your mum to the shop. Oh, mum, get some Max L tapes, and she'd come back with these because they were cheaper and they looked like Max L, and she probably thought you meant Maxwell, blah, blah, blah. But the surprising thing is, as you heard there, and I don't fake audio, is that even though this doesn't look as nice a cassette tape-wise, 
The differences between the original and this knockoff are minimal. They really are. I mean, this one just needed a little bit more record sensitivity. But when they were recording, they both did an equally good job of copying the source. And here's something else I just want to talk about while I'm at it. I used Dolby S there because, I'll be honest, Dolby S I think is fantastic. I really think it's brilliant. The reason I don't use it all the time is simply because I only have two decks that actually use it. My portables don't have Dolby S. And I don't want to be beholden to a noise reduction technology that isn't universal. You know, I'm making these recordings, I want them to last. And I don't want them to have to be to a point, say I lose the ability to use a Dolby S deck. I can't listen to them anymore because without Dolby S, Dolby S recordings sound very, very strange. So that's why I don't use them. But as you heard there, a knockoff tape from the early 1980s made in Singapore with Dolby S on it. Didn't it sound fantastic? And I'm really, really shocked and surprised at that because I thought these were just going to be type zero garbage. But as it turned out, it made a very decent recording. I mean, you know, that's the thing. This is a knockoff. And as I'm seeing, and I'm part to this, I think these knockoffs are charming now. At the time, you go, oh, look at this cynical cash in and Maxell would have gone mad. But now, 35, 40 years afterwards, I think these knockoffs are really charming. I mean, some are terrible. I mean, you know, there's even, I think, a Brazilian brand called Max Val. You know, M-A-X-V-A-L. But they were everywhere and they've got nothing to do with being Max L. And supposedly they have decent enough tape in them. A bit like these, maybe. But um, I think nowadays these knockoffs are really charming and I wouldn't be surprised if they start becoming collectible. So... There we go, that was just a little video for you because mainly the guys in the Facebook group when I posted a picture of this yesterday saying, oops, I've been conned. They said, oh, you got to do a video, got to do a video. So there you go, there's a little video on it and I don't think it turned out as any one of us would have thought. So uh, yeah, there's nothing more surprising than a surprise. But I'm going to put a link down below for, to the Facebook group. I know a lot of you love telling me your stories in the comments. That's great. Super, but there's more and more and more and I'm getting less and less time to look at them. So if you want to talk tapes, get a Facebook account, they're free. Go and join Blank Cassette Tapes. The link is in the description down there and I'm going to put a little link to it at the end of this video. Come and join us. We're all friendly. There's myself and another couple of guys who are good moderators. Don't be shy. We don't tolerate trolls. We don't tolerate swearing. It's as simple as that. Come in. Be nice and enjoy and you can talk about all the cassettes you like and you can talk with a lot, a lot of people because the group is growing and growing. We're over a thousand members now. It's growing and growing as people come back to cassettes. And if you don't understand why people are coming back to cassettes, like many people are commenting in the comments, and I did so better, blah, 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 then why do it? Just go away. We're happy. We enjoy it because there is something intangible because unlike... Buying an SD card and copying some songs on it, you're not surprised by that. You're not surprised when it works much better than you thought. It's an SD card, you copy it on, that's what happens. You ain't getting that surprise. Whereas with tapes, this Maxwell turned out to be a surprise. It turned out to be decent and novel and have character, which is something you can never say about a modern digital format. So happy taping, please like and subscribe, and hopefully maybe I'll see you in the Facebook group. Bye-bye.